In this video, we will be discussing the most haunted battlefields in the world part two. Thanks to the Battle of Alamo, San Antonio is a hotbed of haunted hotels as well as theaters, hospitals, and many other buildings and locations from ghostly apparitions of army officials who fought for the independence of Texas from Mexico to figures of famous people including an American president have been reported in the haunted city. Teddy Roosevelt is regularly seen in Menga hotel halls and bars and has even caused one employee to quit after terrifying him so much he tried to break through a locked door. There have been reports of it being so haunted that there are upwards of 45 ghosts that reside in the hotel. The Crockett Hotel is located adjacent to the Alamo. Many of the Alamo defenders can be seen and heard around the hotel, including the sounds of their horses' hooves. However, the most haunted of all the rooms in the hotel are its offices. They overlook the hotel's swimming pool and patio and are Said to be where General Santa Anna and his troops waited to breach the fortified walls of the Alamo. As you guessed it, the most haunted place in San Antonio is the Alamo, the main site of the Battle of Alamo. It used to be called the Mission San Antonio de Valero when the city was under Mexican rule. There were plans to tear it down not long after Texan independence was achieved, but after people reported ghostly sightings of the old army marching up and down the path by the Alamo, they were abandoned. Afterwards, it was made into the police headquarters and jail, and reports of the paranormal continued. There was so much activity that many prisoners and staff who worked the night shift reported moans so loud that they were woken up. Many of the guards started to refuse to work the night shift because there was so much ghostly activity occurring, and so the prison was forced to move into a different building. Before the battle, the site was once the city's cemetery and once housed at least a thousand bodies under its soil. One of the most reported ghosts ghosts at the Alamo is of a little blonde-haired boy. If you want to see him, you have your best chance in the building's gift shop. It is said that the boy was evacuated during the big battle, but due to his parents not doing the same, he visits the place where he last saw them. You can see most of the ghosts during the month of February, which is when the battle occurred. Number 4. The Haunted Battlefield of Savannah, Georgia Like its northern Civil War counterpart Gettysburg, it is often called the most haunted city in America. Savannah was the site of the second bloodiest siege of the American Revolution and one of the least studied. The Polish nobleman Casimir Pulaski was among its casualties, and his spirit is one of many which haunt some of the city's famous areas. Revolutionary war hero and Rhode Island Quaker Nathaniel Green died and was buried in Savannah following the war, and his spirit, as well as that of his son, have been encountered by people when approaching a monument erected in his memory after his first grave was vandalized during the Civil War. The British occupied Savannah early in the American Revolutionary War, and in 1779, a joint French and American force attacked the city from the west, hoping to capture it quickly through an assault rather than a protracted siege. When the first assault failed, the American and French forces laid the city under siege beginning in mid-September. By October, the supporting French fleet was running low on supplies, and the beginning signs of scurvy among some of the crews were being noted by officers. On October 16th, wanting to end the siege, Siege as quickly as possible, the French and American ground forces assaulted the British fortifications but were driven back. There were heavy losses among the French and Americans, among them Pulaski and an American sergeant named William Jasper. Years later, a statue memorializing William Jasper, who was a hero of the defense of Charleston early in the war, was erected in Savannah's Madison Square. Locals say that the ghost of William Jasper has been seen many times in revolutionary uniform moving about Madison Square square in preparation to face the British troops. Other reports of apparitions, apparently British in the area, have also been seen in Savannah for decades. When Casimir Pulaski died, he was hastily buried as the American and French armies abandoned the siege and withdrew. His gravesite was unknown for many years, though a statue was erected in his memory in Monterey Square. If you're enjoying this video, then smash the subscribe button. At number three are the ghosts of Dresden. Well, not quite a battlefield, it was a city that experienced extraordinary Allied bombing during World War II, which caused enormous suffering and deaths. In February 1945, as World War II was almost at its conclusion, two waves of British bombers and one wave of US bombers targeted the city. The British bombers dropped so many incendiaries and explosives that the fires in the city soon joined, creating a terrifying tornado of flames that rose far 
far into the night sky, creating hurricane winds and sucking victims of their air. Those caught outside were either dismembered or burned when their clothes spontaneously caught fire or when they found their feet stuck in melting tar. Death also came to those who had taken shelter underground. There they sat as above them, in the words of one witness, the gates of hell opened. Those who weren't gradually suffocated or who suffered carbon monoxide induced heart attacks were eventually baked and mummified. All this together makes Dresden a dark destination and a city with unfortunate souls that still roam the city. Number two is Yorktown, Virginia. Yorktown was a small tobacco port on the York River in Virginia when it was selected as the site of a British resupply base by Earl Cornwallis during the American Revolutionary War. After the French fleet drove off a British fleet near the Virginia Capes, Yorktown became a trap for the British Army, besieged by the combined Continental and French armies. In October 1781, the Americans continuously bombarded the British Inn and just outside the town, targeting the most prominent house owned by Thomas Nelson in the belief that the British headquarters was located there. Legend has it that Nelson himself suggested that Washington bomb the house. In fact, the bombardment had driven the British senior staff to seek another shelter. The Nelson house was used as a hospital. The sounds of the suffering, the moans and groans of the wounded were heard over the thunder of the French and American guns. Citizens of Yorktown sought shelter from the bombardment in caves along the banks of the York River. After the British surrendered the post, the American army returned to its watchful positions on the Hudson River and in New Jersey, leaving behind many of the fortifications and entrenchments they built during the siege. Both the caves, now known as Cornwallis Cave and the Nelson House, have been reported to be haunted. The sounds from the Nelson House have been limited to the third floor, and spectral images have been claimed to have been seen through its windows at night. The caves were later enlarged into a single cavern by smugglers and are now secured with gates, but the ghostly sounds emerging from the site have been reported both by people walking in the area and moving on the river. And number one is Lake Poyang or China's Bermuda Triangle. Poyang Lake is the largest freshwater lake in China and in 1363 was the site of the largest naval battle in history. It involved as many as 800,000 men. The battle started as a siege by the Han Navy against the Ming control town of Nanchang. However, the city's walls held firm and eventually the Ming Navy arrived to counter the siege. The Han Navy totaled around 100 large ships armed with around 650,000 men. The Ming Navy had the responsibility of ending the siege and was much weaker with around 200,000 men on smaller and lighter ships. The Ming Navy used this to their advantage. They maneuvered around the large ships and used fire weapons to devastating effect. Thousands of Han sailors were burned alive as a result. By the end of the battle, the Han armada had been completely destroyed with most of the 650,000 men being sent to the bottom of the lake. The Ming losses were small with just 1,300 dead. Since that fateful day, Poyang Lake has been the site of an enormous number of strange and mysterious events and has earned the nickname of the Chinese Bermuda Triangle. From the early 1960s to the late 1980s, more than 200 ships sank in the mysterious waters of Poyang Lake. According to the Department in Charge of Maritime Affairs in China, large ships with payloads as heavy as 2,000 tons have sunk in Poyang Lake. On August 3, 1985, 13 ships were lost on a single day, which is an extremely rare event in maritime history. Scientists have been trying to unravel Poyang Lake's mysteries for years, but no investigations have yielded any concrete conclusions. The Nanjing Institute of Geography and Limnology, the study of inland water, has devoted itself to exploring and investigating Poyang Lake in recent years. Jiahu Jiang, a researcher at the Institute, said it is unimaginable that no shipwreckage or victim remains have ever been found beneath the waters during the numerous expeditions they have conducted, even though hundreds of ships are known to have disappeared. Japanese invaders during World War II have also fallen victim to the lake's effects. The Japanese army that invaded China during World War II also encountered an unexplained situation on the lake. On April 16, 1945, a Japanese cargo ship that weighed more than 2,000 tons sank in Poyang Lake. Operated by the Japanese army, the ship was fully loaded with stolen treasures taken from Chinese civilians. The ship sank in the lake.
lake and none of the crew escaped. The Japanese military ordered its Navy personnel stationed nearby to salvage the ship. Only one of the divers found his way back to the shore, but he could not speak. The survivor was stricken with extreme fear, so much so he was driven to insanity. At the end of World War II, the Chinese nationalist government tried to salvage the ship once again, this time with help from Edward Bohr, a respected American diver and salvage expert. In the summer of 1946, Bohr led a dive team, but nothing was found after a months-long search. During the search, several divers also mysteriously vanished. Many years later, he spoke of having seen a blinding light and hearing an ear-piercing screeching sound while diving in the lake. He claimed that the lake appeared to be shaking and an unseen vortex was pulling him and his dive team towards the lake bed, although he managed to escape. The grip of the vortex, he claims to have seen the rest of the dive team disappear into the bottom of the lake. What's also intriguing about the area is the geographic location of Poyang Lake. It is situated in the vicinity of 30 degrees north. Many people link the mystery of these waters with other unsolved mysteries centering around latitude 30 degrees north, such as the Bermuda Triangle in the Atlantic Ocean and the pyramids in Egypt. Click here to watch the next video. Also, please smash the subscribe button and if you made it this far, click on the like button.